One of the most subtly annoying things to deal with in any type of recording, whether it's in a music studio or a film set or even just a vlogging environment, is hum. Hum is super annoying because it exists pretty much everywhere and it's generated by all kinds of things that you really don't have control over. You've got lights, you've got generators on film sets that power the whole film crew so you can't necessarily turn them off. Air conditioners generate hum. I mean, you can have faulty grounding in your electrical wire. It's just, it could be anything. The dehum module is really, really useful here because it's purpose-built to get all those really subtly irritating tones from things like fluorescent lights, for example, out of your recordings while leaving everything else intact. And it does this using what are called notch filters that are basically really, really sharp bands of EQ that just pull down certain frequencies and leave everything else alone. Pulling up this module, it looks a little bit more complicated than some of the others, but once you get your head around what these parameters do, it becomes really easy to navigate and it's a really powerful tool. Really quick, the two parameters I'm not really gonna touch on too much because they're a little bit more advanced and you don't necessarily need to know them thoroughly are the filter DC offset and linear phase filters functions. Every now and then you'll run into recordings that have waveforms that kind of look like they're skewed upward a little bit. That can happen due to issues with direct electrical current and it's sort of complicated. It gets into a little bit of the electrical engineering side of things, but basically the filter DC offset function will correct that and bring them back to where they're supposed to be. So you won't get any weird anomalies with your sound. The linear phase filter is the other more advanced checkbox that gets into some really technical stuff. It's, you know, pre and post filter ringing, and it sort of changes the way these filters actually work on your sound. But the biggest effect that you're going to see from it is leaving it unchecked is going to allow for faster processing. Checking the box maybe will be slightly more accurate to the very discerning ears, but for the majority of people, you're not going to need to worry about this, so I wouldn't bother with it. All right, into the more useful stuff. The base frequency here is going to be the most important parameter to set. That is selecting which frequency is most resonant in the hum that you're trying to address. That is the fundamental frequency. You can select it by sweeping that EQ notch through your frequency spectrum. You can also select a more common frequency from the drop-down menu between 50, 60, 120 hertz, etc. Or you can hit the suggest button to let the plugin kind of guess what you most likely want to remove. And for more variable tones, like an air conditioner turning off and sort of fluctuating in frequency, for example, which happens a lot on film sets, it's kind of ridiculous, you can check the adaptive mode and it'll kind of guess where exactly you want to be addressing and it'll follow those frequency changes across the board. Once you've made your selection, using the filter Q slider on that bass frequency will adjust how big of an effect around that center frequency you want it to have. And you can really aggressively remove frequencies or you can just center in on one tiny one. The more wide you make the cue, it's going to affect a lot more so you can start losing fidelity. I'd be careful with this. I always err on the side of caution with noise reduction, but it gives you the option. Dehum has built-in high pass and low pass filters that you can engage and adjust the slopes of if you want as well. I tend not to use these in this module specifically because I like to use my filters in a completely different part of the workflow and maintain control over them so that I can vary it. The dehum module, the way that I use it, I have to render all these changes that I make into my audio. And if I bake this into a file, then I'm really not going to be able to undo it easily at any point. Now, again, every hum has a prominent fundamental frequency. That's that bass frequency that you selected. And they generate harmonic frequencies as well. So it sort of sounds like there's a, a fundamental resonance, but it also goes up the frequency spectrum. And by adjusting the number of harmonics that you're also addressing, you can notch all those sort of trace phantom frequencies out of your recordings as well. And it'll end up being a lot cleaner depending on how many harmonics you remove. You can adjust how aggressively those additional notch filters are working by using the slope slider, and you can also link or unlink any of those parameters so that you can either adjust them all manually, you can sort of link the odd and even frequencies and adjust them independently of each other, or again, link all of them and manipulate all of them at once. But that's really for more complex stuff, and again, a lot of this you're going to be able to load up, even hit the suggest button or turn on the adaptive mode, and it does a lot of good work for you. And that is Dehum in a nutshell. This is definitely a super powerful plugin that does one thing really, really well, and you don't need it until you need it, but when you run into Hum, and you will, it's not a matter of if, this is the plugin to reach for and you're gonna be glad that you have it.